This video is about how to make the most out of the user interface of Puzzle-Nonograms.com. Part 1. General Overview The playing field consists of three main areas. The control buttons. From here you can control the zoom of the puzzle, the game settings, and you can undo or redo moves. The game timer is also located in this area. The action buttons. From here you can submit the puzzle solution for verification. Reset the puzzle. Print a copy. Share your progress. Or load a new puzzle. The puzzle area. This is the actual playing field where you will enjoy solving puzzles. Part 2. Control buttons. Adjusting the size of the puzzle is an important aspect of the game. Finding the perfect zoom level will help you focus easier. You can use the zoom button to show and hide the zoom slider. Sliding it to the right will enlarge the puzzle, sliding it to the left will make it smaller. You can reset the zoom level to its default position by clicking the 100% button. Sometimes zooming in and out makes the lines a bit blurry. Resetting the zoom level makes the picture crystal clear. If you happen to zoom in too much or the puzzle is too big a scroll bar will appear on the bottom. The second button shows and hides the settings. I'll tell you everything about the settings in part 5. In this area you can also see the puzzle timer. You can compete with other players or with yourself if you are that type of a player. When you start playing a puzzle your progress is automatically saved on your device. This is in case you accidentally close the browser, the power goes off or you navigate away. Quite useful for larger daily, weekly and monthly puzzles as well. Have in mind that the timer keeps running so you may see ridiculous numbers if you come back after a day or two. If this bothers you you can simply start a new puzzle or hide the timer altogether from the settings. If you make a mistake or take a wrong path then the undo and redo buttons are here to help. You can also use the standard keyboard shortcuts, Ctrl plus Z and Ctrl plus Y. Have in mind that if you reload the page or submit your solution for verification you will lose the ability to undo your moves. Part 3. Action Buttons Once you are ready with solving the puzzle you can press the Done button to verify your solution. You can also press the Enter key on your keyboard to submit it. If you got it right, then the timer will stop and you will be offered a chance to submit your score to the Hall of Fame. If you messed it up completely, you can press the Start Over button, which will clear all the moves, letting you start from scratch. If you are more of a pen and paper type of a player, you can print the current puzzle using the Print button. This will show you a printer-friendly preview. If you want to print a bigger puzzle and it doesn't fit the sheet you can zoom it out until it does. You can also use the Ctrl plus P keyboard shortcut. If you want to print more than one puzzle you can check out the mass print section, where you can print multiple puzzles on the same page. If you are stuck, but you know someone who can help you, then you can use the Ask a Friend button. It will show you options to share your current progress to Facebook or Twitter. You will also be able to use the Permalink to send your progress to someone in an email, instant messenger or any other way. If you want, you can also use the link to the screenshot of your current state. If you want to load a new challenge you can use the new puzzle button. Part 4. Puzzle area. Enough with the boring stuff. This is the fun area where you will actually solve the puzzles. I will show you how to play with the default settings. The standard method is to play with a mouse. I will show you how to play with the keyboard in part 6 and on a mobile device in part 7. You can click with your left mouse button to make a cell black. You can also click and move your mouse to mark more than one cell. You can click with your right mouse button to place an X in a cell. Click and drag to mark more than one cell. If you hold your Control key while clicking you will get the opposite effect. Control plus left click places an X. Click on a task number to mark it as completed. Part 5. Settings. Let's see what goodies do we have here. At the top of the settings section you can see a toolbar with some very important settings. 
They are so important for some players that you can pin them on the screen with this pin toolbar checkbox. Which all do while explaining what they are for. The first four define what happens when you click with your left mouse button. By default, as you can see, we make a cell black. If you choose the first button then the state of the cell will rotate from white to black, to X, and back to white. Some players just prefer it this way, but this is particularly useful if you are on a mobile device, where you don't have a right mouse button or a control key to help you place an X. This setting obviously places an X on your left button click. And this one will make the cell white, if you want to erase some area for example. The final button defines your drawing mode. By default it is set to free, meaning you can draw any shape you want while dragging your mouse. Clicking the button once will change the mode to line. Now you can only draw in a straight line. Rather useful as you usually work on a single row or a column. Clicking it again will switch to rect mode. This will allow you to draw a rectangular area. You may find that this option suits you best. Now let's see what other settings we have. The second setting is, hide the timer. Some players are not competitive and the timer just makes them feel uncomfortable. Hide it so you can relax while solving the puzzle. The next setting is, night mode. If you are playing in the dark and the black on white is too bright for you, this setting will change the colors to relieve your eyes. A good night's sleep is always recommended though. If you are left-handed or you just prefer it that way this setting will move the side clues on the right-hand side. Some players like the clues to be displayed on all sides. Use the show task on both sides to achieve that. Show cell counter will display a little helper while you draw on the puzzle. If you are in free mode it will show how many cells you have painted. If you are in line mode it will show you how long is the line you are drawing. If you touch another painted cell it will also show you the total length of the line. In rect mode it shows the size of the area. Show coordinates helper will display tiny coordinate numbers for better navigation in bigger puzzles. Highlight last change will show a blue outline on the cells you have changed in your last move. Highlight current row and column will do what it says. The current row is defined by where you clicked last. You can also hold the shift button so the current row and column changes while you move your mouse. If you like this to happen all the time, you can switch on the on mouse over setting. Use X to mark completed task numbers will change the way completed clues look like. A bit less readable but more visible in my opinion. The last setting auto cross completed lines will put X on the entire row or column if you mark all clues as completed. The painted cells should match the clues of course. Part 6. Playing with your keyboard. If you are not a mouse person, or the constant clicking annoys you, or your coworkers, you can use your keyboard to play. First click inside the puzzle just to make sure it has the focus. Then you can navigate through the puzzle using your arrow keys. You should see a blue outline on the cell that is currently focused. You can press the control or the space key to mark a cell black. And the shift key to place an X. You can also hold the control or shift key and navigate with the arrow keys to draw a line or an area. Use control plus Z to undo a move, and control plus Y to redo it. F switches to free mode. L switches to line mode. R switches to rect mode. Part 7. Playing on a mobile device. I am going to load the site on iPhone SE, which has a pretty small screen. Obviously the bigger the screen the better. Let's see how to adjust the zoom of the puzzle. On mobile devices you have two options for zooming. First you have the zoom button and the slider. And second you can pinch with two fingers to zoom in and out the entire page. 
If the puzzle is too large for the screen you can scroll it left and right to reach any part of the puzzle. Another approach is to zoom out the puzzle until it fits the screen. Then you can zoom in the entire page until the puzzle is big enough. This approach also allows you to scroll diagonally. The rotate option is selected by default on mobile devices. This allows you to place black cells with a single tap. Tap twice to place an X. Tap the X again to make the cell blank. Tap and hold for a while so you can draw a line. You can now solve puzzles like a pro.